morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott Winslow, W-I-N-S-L-O-W. I'm here on behalf of Dr. Willie Wilson and the Willie Wilson Foundation. Dr. Wilson is here with a distinguished panel of guests this morning to discuss what's going to the floor and city council in a few minutes, a resolution on slavery reparations. We'll begin this morning with our first speaker from the National Reparations Organization, Mr. Cam Howard. Mr. Howard. So uh, we're here to make the demand for reparations in the city of Chicago, for black people in the city of Chicago. We wanna, I want to start out by first thanking Dr. Willie Wilson for joining this reparations movement. I want to thank Alderman Sawyer for agreeing to introduce the resolution. I want to thank Commissioner Boykin for getting us to an actual resolution that we can all be proud of. And I want to thank Dr. Conrad Worrell for his tireless effort in leading us in this strategy, in leading in COBRA in this strategy. In COBRA for 30 years sought to educate, motivate, and mobilize our people around the issue of reparations. Reparations for centuries of crimes committed by governments, corporations, institutions, and individuals acting independently. For obvious reasons, the primary government target was the federal government. Through executive proclamation, the special field order number 15 that promised 40 acres and a mule, and constitutional amendments like the 13th, 14th, and 15th amendments, redress in the forms of an economic footing and full citizen rights were initially granted. However, the 40 acres were seized by a new executive order, and each of the constitutional amendments was subverted by white terrorist practices and policies. The, the 13th Amendment that abolished slave enslavement left in it a clause that through mass incarceration has over 500,000 black men living in a state of quasi-enslavement today. The 14th Amendment that granted citizenship has come to mean a fourth-class citizenship as a result of intense racial hatred, pseudo-race science, and media distortion of black humanity. The 15th Amendment that granted us the right to vote was blocked with deadly consequences for nearly 80 years after Reconstruction. And since 1965, the Voting Rights Act, new ways of suppressing the black vote are constantly being invented. So the federal policies enacted post-enslavement to redress past crimes of, of the period of enslavement were superseded by crimes of Jim Crow apartheid that was acted out at the state and local levels. Here in Chicago, a city founded by a black man born of a Haitian enslaved mother has its full share of apartheid policies and practices against the black community. This year marks the 100th anniversary of the 1919 white attack, mislabeled the 1919 race riot, a week of white terror that left thousands of blacks homeless, hundreds injured, and many killed. 2019 also marks the 50th anniversary of the illegal COINTELPRO operations of the FBI that was carried out by the Cook County State's Attorney's Office and the Chicago Police Department that left Chairman Fred Hampton and Defense Captain Mark Clark murdered of the Black Panther Party for self-defense. We can also mention here the John Burge terror regime that still has victims suffering in incarceration. The systematic racial cleansing of black teachers from Chicago public school system, along with the closing of 53 schools, four of which were high schools in the same community. Ta-Nehisi Coates' essay, A Case for Reparations, that reinvigorated the reparations movement, focused on the Chicago contract buying scheme that literally stole economic wealth from black Chicagoans. 
A recent study by Jack McNamara, Loyola University, and others quantified that theft from 1950 to 1970 to $4.6 billion in today's value. This plunder that Ta-Nehisi College primary, properly labeled has devastating socioeconomic and social cultural consequences, decreased economic outcomes, educational outcomes, deteriorating housing, loss of the most viable black business community in the nation, destruction of black families and increased dependence on crime for sustainability, and the most, most of all, the internal violence that exists between our community. The Chicago City Council and the Office of the Mayor can fulfill their obligation of addressing the apartheid actions of former administrations by establishing the Chicago Descendants of Enslaved Africans Reparations Commission. We're here to make the demand reparations now. Thank you. Uh, we're now going to hear from Mr. Conrad Worrell. Mr. Worrell. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, today, we stand here as representatives of the movement for reparations that began in the late 19th century, led by a black woman by the name of Callie House, who organized the National ex slave Bounty and Pension Association that fought for enslaved, formerly enslaved Africans to receive pension for their uh, oppression prior to the Civil War. Kelly House was indicted because the white judge told her that white people would never give her what she was asking for. So in 1915, Kelly House filed a lawsuit of $68 million against the United States government, was indicted and served a year in a, in a day in the federal penitentiary. So we're here today to point out that we support the commission to be established as an ordinance and a legal body to examine the impact in all of the areas that black people should be repaired. And so for the record today, I'm suggesting that this commission's first document ought to be the 1921 Race Relations Commission, 800 pages from the race riots and the brutality that it was exercised against black people in the riot of 1919. I'm suggesting that this commission, when established, examined the transatlantic slave trade report that was conducted at the Carruthers Center for Inner City Studies that lays out from the research of 200 African-American scholars throughout the United States as the impact of the transatlantic slave trade and how that rolled out in the state of Illinois and the city of Chicago. And finally, Ta-Nehisi Coates wrote an article in 2014 in the Atlantic Magazine, a case for reparations in which he examined the housing ripoff of black people through contract buying on the west side that culminated into millions and millions of dollars of black people being ripped off. So this commission that Alderman Sawyer is providing leadership in with the support of Dr. Willie Wilson is a very important continuation of the demand for reparations as reparations of African people is being discussed and organized throughout the world. All right. uh, thank you very much. Uh, now we're going to hear from Alderman Roberto Maldonado. Thank you. And good morning to all of you. I'm very grateful and honored to be part of this coalition to bring about parity, fairness to African Americans in Chicago and to Latinos who have African descent. I think that this is a breakthrough ordinance, a breakthrough uh, legislation that is going to help not only 
those who are African Americans in the city of Chicago, but also Latinos as well, that have some um, African ancestry. Um, I want to thank uh, Alderman Sawyer for his leadership, and I also want to thank Alderman Villegas, who brought about the provision to make sure that um, Latinos with African descent, the, the descent that will be part of this ordinance. And especially, I want to thank Dr. Willie Wilson, who was really the head and the inspiration behind this piece of legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're now going to hear from uh, Alderman Lopez. Good morning, everyone. I'm Alderman Raymond Lopez of Chicago's 15th Ward. I represent African Americans and Latinos together. And I'm proud to stand here with Dr. Wilson and this eclectic group of people to demand a commission to finally have substantive talks about reparations for the descendants of slaves. The success of America is built on slavery. Our prosperity was built on forced labor, on separating families, and on forcing people to feel and be treated as though they were less than human. It is time to repair the damage slavery has caused. And though I am not African American, I am not a descendant of slaves, I know what it feels like to be ostracized. And there's nothing wrong with having a conversation about making things right and about making a people whole once again. Let's do this, let's start here, and let's continue this conversation until we make reparations a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman. We're now gonna hear from uh, State Representative Will Davis. Good morning, everyone. I am Will Davis, state representative of the 30th district, which is in the south suburbs. Why south suburbs? Because black people live in the south suburbs as well. They need to be a part of this conversation, and it's my job and my duty to make sure that African Americans in the south suburbs benefit from this effort. I first of all want to thank Dr. Willie Wilson for raising this issue to such a higher height than it has been and giving us the opportunity to have this dialogue. I'm certainly thankful to uh, Alderman uh, Sawyer in the City Council who is leading the effort with legislative action and we look forward to following his lead in the state legislature. This issue has been studied before in the state legislature and unfortunately it didn't go anywhere. It only went so far. Well, our objective today is to pick up that mantle, to pick it up where it left off, and to move it forward to bring this conversation to a reality and understand exactly what reparations means to the African American community. Long since the days of 40 Acre and a Mule, we're past that. This means something completely different. Free health care, free education, free economic opportunities. That's what this conversation is manifesting itself into today. And I look forward, look forward to being the sponsor of legislation in Springfield to make sure that we make what we know and what we want reparations to be now a reality here in the state of Illinois. Thank you. Uh, we'll now hear from Commissioner Richard Boykin. Richard Boykin, B-O-Y-K-I-N, former Cook County Commissioner. I want to thank God for this day. What a glorious day this is for the city of Chicago. Reparations now, reparations now, reparations now, reparations now. Look, I also want to thank God for Dr. Willie Wilson and his leadership. Give it up for him. And let me tell you, you can have the leadership, but you got to also have courageous public officials who are willing to take the leadership role in the institution of government. And so I want to thank Alderman Rod Sawyer and all of the aldermen who are here today, Maldonado, uh, Alderman uh, Ray Lopez, and others. I want to thank them for their leadership here in the city council. 
but most of all, I want to thank the people of the reparations movement for keeping a constant fire on this issue. Look, I want to thank Encobra and Dr. Conrad Worrell. I'm proud to just have had a role in terms of helping to craft this final document that we have before us. But let me tell you what this is. This is a moral issue. This is a moral imperative that from 1619 to 2019 is 400 years. In the book of Genesis, it says to, that God said to Abram, for 400 years, you'll be in a strange land. Your people will be in a strange land. They will be inflicted with pain. But at the end of that 400 years, they will come out with great possessions. This is the end of that 400 years. We got to start this movement now. We got to make sure that we get this bill across the finish line, that we get this commission, and that we deal with the health disparities that exist, the disparities in contracting, and most of all, the disparities in terms of gun violence. 80% of those being shot and killed in the last 10 years, African Americans, often at the hands of other African Americans. We got to deal with it, and we'll deal with it now. I'm looking forward to working with this coalition to get it done. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, we'll now hear from uh, Shondo Valdez. Well, thank you very much. I am not uh, African-American. I am a Hispanic. Yet, I am aware of the fact that there is a need for us to work together to discuss topics that, at times, may be difficult to discuss. And so, as Dr. Willie Wilson has asked us to do a few weeks ago, we were able to bring Hispanic clergy and Hispanic leaders together with African-American leaders and we began to discuss the topic of reparations. And so I'm here today to tell you that this is a conversation that has been had, and this is a conversation that we desire as Hispanics and as African Americans to see move forward towards that unity that is required amongst God's people and amongst the citizenship of this great city of ours. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Pastor. So uh, this is the culmination of countless hours of work and behind the scenes efforts, many, many meetings, dinners, and lunches. And one of the leaders of the work to date on this and one of the co-sponsors of the bill that's going to the floor today, I'm pleased to introduce Alderman Roderick Sawyer. Yay. 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 Thank you and good morning to everyone. I'm Roderick Sawyer, and I'm glad to serve as Alderman of the Sixth Ward and co-sponsor of this uh, groundbreaking resolution. I want to thank all my partners here today, my fellow colleagues, uh, Representative Davis, Attorney Richard Boykin, who helped, uh, was a great part in crafting the bill. Of course, I want to give a great thanks to Dr. Willie Wilson, who's presented the, thank you. His love for black people is manifested in his willingness to spend money and make an investment in the reparations and the repair of black people. But I really want to thank two people here today that have enlightened me personally, and that's Cam Howard and Dr. Conrad Worrell. Yes. I'll give them a great thank you. And the members of Incobra. They opened my eyes once we talked about this because quite honestly, when we first talked about this, it wasn't right. And we went back to the board, and they instructed us and enlightened us, gave us things to read, and gave us material. And I realized this fight has been going on for 129 years. And we still haven't gotten it right. It's going on for 129 years. You heard Dr. Warren say one of the leaders over 100 years ago got arrested for even bringing it up. We know that this is going to be an uphill skip battle. But we cannot stop this conversation we have to keep the conversation going for the descendants of enslaved Africans here in the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois, this United States of America. We have to have a serious discussion about reparations to repair the disparities that we've had. I cannot say enough of what already has been said. We already know about the disparities in health. 
social and economic disparities. We're at the bottom or the top of every key category. Top when it's bad, bottom when it's, you know, when it's good. We have to correct that. And the way that we can correct that is right here, talking about the repair, the rehabilitation, the non-cessation, all the elements that have been talked about. We don't have to study it anymore. We have to implement it. So let's implement it. Reparations now. Hey. 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 I also have the distinct honor today to introduce someone to you that you already know, but someone who's been in the forefront in the fight for the advancement of black people here in the city of Chicago and all over the country, none other than our own Dr. Willie Wilson. Hey, hey. I want to thank the Lord for his amazing grace. I want to thank all the pastors who's here, all the aldermen, Maranalo, thank them for being here. Uh, my good friends, all of them saw you, the mission working. Uh, Comrade World, and Brother Howard, and all the other different organizations who are here today. I want to thank everybody for coming out and supporting this here. I must say this too is that for my uh, participation here, reparations started back in 1865, and, um, and from then it started five African American or ten African American uh, uh, ministers. And up until recently, I got involved with this whole situation was because I saw a debate on um, the uh, president debate, and I said, well, is this going to go anywhere, or are they just using it for political reasons only? I said, so I'm going to get involved and put some dollars behind it in Chicago, and let's try to get it passed in Chicago. So I reached out to the Latino brothers and sisters as well as our African-American uh, Alderman brothers and sisters as well. And I must say this much here, there's no better person to carry this bill than uh, Alderman Sawyer. I want y'all to give him a good round of applause for he can help us, all right? And, and Alderman Bernardo, where is he at? Oh, right here. Give him a hand as well, all right? And, and this reparation is people who are from African descent. It, it, it's more than just uh, African American from uh, African descent. If you're Latino, I don't care what you are, if you got African descent for the citizens of Chicago, that's how this whole thing works. All right? We appreciate the, the coalition that are working together and trying to make the thing work. Right now, uh, this reparation is going to cause for uh, our commissioner to be. Uh, be granted to us, and we're going to try to carry those things out. Free education, stop this violence, you know, homelessness, uh, senior citizens, food, medical, et cetera, et cetera, and all those things because our community just suffer a lot. Now, I do understand that at one point in time, Brother Conrad World now had introduced it and, and uh, represented uh, uh, Will David. I thank him for us. He's going to introduce this and January uh, to the state, so and also Senator Maddie Hunter, but she's not here today. I want you to give Representative Will David a round of applause for taking this step here, all right? So the fight is not ending just in Chicago. It's going to Springfield. After that, hopefully that Conrad World and, and, and the National Cobra will take this whole thing national. And I appreciate the fact that they've been on the fighting line all these years. I happen to come along to be able to have some finance to put behind it and to make this uh, work. We are hired a four-time staff person, uh, Beecher Boy. Where you at, Beecher? Right here. Right here, all right. Thank you. She's heading this up on my staff here, along with several other organization people as well. Uh, there's more work need to be done. There's more money going to be put behind this whole situation as well, right? This is not a politic, political situation. This is about African American slave descent. I want to make that very clear, all right? We must stop this violence. People must get education. We got to stop it and make it work. Now, what I'm going to say right now, I'm going to give, uh, we're going to pray that uh, Alderman Sawyer and the coalition of the uh, Latina make this thing work for us. Uh, we got to get behind them, and we will get behind them. We're going to fight for what's right, and we're going to support the whole thing. Again, thank all of you all for coming out. And if there are any questions, I'd like to 
uh, put over to the media. If you got any questions, ask me, do so. August Sawyer, Representative David, uh, uh, Anana, and uh, Richard Boykin. Uh, if you got any questions, we'll be glad to take the questions. Well, we know if you don't do nothing, it ain't going nowhere, you know? So we got to get started and get it going, but I'm going to let uh, Brother Sawyer speak to that as well. And I'll, Monado, and David. Well, I, I couldn't uh, echo that sentiment more. If we do nothing, nothing will happen, like Dr. Wilson stated. So this is the first step in having a conversation. We have to acknowledge that the atrocities that were inflicted upon uh, descendants, well, Af enslaved Africans and the descendants of enslaved Africans has never been redressed. We have to acknowledge that first. So in order for us to really understand reparations, let's understand why we need it. You know, we have to acknowledge that we were wrongfully enslaved. This might have been one of the worst atrocities to humankind in the history of our world the enslavement of Africans here in the United States. We have to acknowledge that, and there has been nothing to recompense the enslaved Africans as of yet. We have to devise some plan, and we have to have a discussion about why this happens and what we do going forward. So this is the first step in having that conversation, hopefully crafting that will turn into an ordinance and to implement it and to right the wrongs that have been inflicted upon us, not just locally, but nationally as well. Thank you. I, I had a conversation last night with the mayor's office uh, that we're going to uh, look forward to having further conversations about it, but we're moving forward. So let's, know, let's be clear about that. Sorry? Well, I, I did not ask her to sign on. Uh, I've never asked a mayor to sign on anything I've had. Uh, I want to ask my colleagues, the, the, uh, my fellow aldermen, to sign on. And I'm thinking that, I'm hopeful that we'll get a, a very robust uh, count by the time we file this resolution this morning. All right. <laughs> yes. I have to say that the majority of the Latino members of the, Latino members of the city council uh, from the Latino caucus, they are in support of this resolution. And, uh, in, answer, and in answering to your question, um, since 1994, when I was first elected to the county board, I heard members from the African American caucus at that time on the county board about reparations. Never, never, never we did anything about that. This is the first time, thanks to Alderman Sawyer, that we are going to take some concrete efforts to start the process to, that hopefully will result in actual legislation that will be enacted. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We are now proceeding to the floor of the City Council with the Aldermen to present this resolution. Thank, Thank you all for coming. Oh, we're going to close with a prayer. Reverend Cotton will close us with a, par with a prayer. Our gracious Father, we come at this time in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We come to say thank you, O Heavenly Father. You. Look upon these men that are standing and doing your will. We pray that you give them the strength, the knowledge, the wisdom to be able to go forth. Touch Dr. Willie Wilson, all of the aldermen that is that are present and that are about doing your will, and all of the people that are coming together. We ask in your name for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Amen.